All right, guys, welcome back to Pope Does PLTW. Um, last episode, we created the steel plate and we did it with parametric constraints. So we're going to continue with activity 8.2, which is parametric constraints. And um, for the previous part, there was a table laid out for you um, before you started creating the part. This time, you should create a functions table or similar to that of the steel plate. So I have my instruction sheet open on one side of my screen, um, which you guys can't see. And then I have an Excel document open on the other side of my screen. So I have dimension, description, function, and value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in the letters over here, the description in the second column, function our equation in the third column and then value um, in the fourth column so let's go ahead and get started with this and because it's important to do this before you create the part that way you can look off of your table um, to creating the part instead of off of just the instructions so the first one we come to says the overall height d0 of the part is two inches. So I'm going to type D0 and description is overall height. Function, um, we don't have a function for this particular one because it's just a set value. So um, let's see, we'll just leave that blank and value is going to be 2.0 inches. Okay, D1 is the top width. Function again is none because it gives us direct correlation. So the value is 0.5 inches. The right height, D2, is one quarter inch less than half of the overall height so we say right height and the overall height we know is d0 so we're going to write d0 divided by 2 minus 0 0.25 because that's the same as a quarter of an inch now if i'm going to calculate this so 2 divided by 2 is 1 minus 0 0.25 my value is 0 0.75 inches. Overall width, B3. So we have overall width, and that says it's 50% larger than the overall height. So the overall height is D0, and if we want it 50% larger, we can just multiply that by 1.5, and so 2 times 1.5 gives me 3. So my overall width now is 3 inches. Now, the depth, D4, is 0 0.25 inches greater than the overall height. So my equation is D0 plus 0 0.25. And... So now I get 2.25 inches as a value. Now the next one, upper hole diameter. Um, we know at this point we're gonna extrude the depth. So we're gonna put in a placeholder of D5 to account for the taper, depth taper. And that is going to be, not have a function, and that is going to be just zero degrees because it's a straight um, extrusion. It's important to do this so that your numbers um, don't get messed up. And you'll see why here as we go along. So D6 is going to be the upper hole diameter. So we'll put that in for our description make our box a little bit bigger. And it says that this is 1 8 inch larger than the top width or D1. So we'll do D1 
plus 0 0.125. And it looks like B1 is 0 0.5, so our upper hole diameter is really going to be 0 0.625 inches. Then we get to the lower hole diameter. And I have on your sheet D13, um, but in reality, uh, it's going to skip a couple, and it probably should be D8. So D8, and again, you'll have to check this with your parametric equations because it's not perfect. So D8 is 1 16th inch less than the upper hole diameter, or D6. So I'm going to go lower hole diameter. And then I'm going to do D6 minus 1 16th. Okay. And we'll let you calculate that value on your own. Now, this next one gets a little bit confusing. Okay, we're going to skip these two for right now because we're going to have to put these back in as whole depths. So they're going to be D7 and then also um, D9. And so we're now on to D10, which we are going to call right to whole center. And this will make more sense as we get into the drawing. So right to whole center, the description says the edge distance from the outside circumference of the hole to the edge of the part from the lower hole to the right edge of the part is one eighth inch greater than one quarter of the upper hole diameter. Note that you will dimension to the hole center in the model but are given a constraint on the edge distance. Call the distance from the lower hole center to the right edge right to hole center. Um, this says D20 but we're really going to make it um, D10. So Again, this gets a little bit confusing what we can put in here. So we know that the upper hole diameter is D6. Okay, so we're going to go D6. And it says it's 1 eighth inch greater, so we're going to go plus 0 0.125. But we have to account for the addition of the radius of the lower hole. So the lower hole we know is D8. So we're going to do another plus and parentheses D8 divided by 2 because that accounts for that distance or that radius from the edge to the center. So again, you can calculate that particular value on your own. Next it says the hole centers are aligned at the same distance from the back edge of the included plane. Um, so basically that's saying that the whole centers line up um, in a straight line. And we'll show you that when we get to doing the actual part. So this will be D11 and we will call this whole center to center and it says it's one third of the part depth so if we scroll up the part depth should be d4 so we're going to go d4 divided by 3 as our function all right so if d4 is 2.25 inches we're just going to go equals 2.25 divided by 3. that's the nice thing about doing this in excel is you can just enter the functions as you go along. So let's go back in. Well, you can fill out the um, rest of the chart on your own. When you are finished with the chart, come back for the next episode and we will show you how to make the part. Don't forget to save and to also like and subscribe to Pope Does PLTW.